When it comes to the railroads of the North American supply chain, the first thought to most are the several mile long freight trains that race across thousands of miles of track, the high speed intermodals that run from coast to coast, or the massive locomotives with well over 4,000 horsepower per unit. All these characteristics of railroading are most often affiliated with the Class 1 superpowers such as the Union Pacific, CSX, or Kansas City Southern. While the Class 1s are without doubt the backbone of our nation, they cannot serve every single industry with rail access. And that brings us to today's topic. Today we'll be discussing the short lines of North America and why they matter. Some switch a single industry, while some run on several hundred miles of track. Short lines are otherwise classified as Class 3 railroads, come in a huge variety of sizes and operation styles. Some run every day of the week, others once a week, while some are just simply on an as-needed basis. There are hundreds of short line railroads in the United States alone, and these short lines make up 30% of the tracks in the country, and about a quarter of all freight traverses a short line at some point. Some short lines, such as the Louisiana Northwest, were formed as far back as the 19th century, while others, such as the Arkansas Midland, were formed in the recent decades from the purchase of former Class I main lines. As I mentioned earlier, not every single industry is positioned alongside a main line of a Class I. To put it in simple wording, the short line's main purpose is to extend rail access where the Class I's cannot. Short lines often act as the best way for companies to get their product out to the huge market of North America or on the other hand is the final stop for the cargo. For example, these empty tank cars on the Delta Southern Railroad will be filled with various chemicals from a nearby port and sent back to the KCS for distribution to wherever it's needed. While the Delta Southern may not have an endless amount of track and access to the North American market, its one connection with the Class 1 allows access to just about every market on the continent. Meanwhile, KCS doesn't divert resources to make sure the industry is served. They simply drop the cars for DSR and wait for them to be sent back. While it's a little more complicated than that, this sums up the majority of interchange operations throughout the country. So many customers in these remote locations depend on short lines. So many of the Class 3's are vital to these small towns. Without short lines, so many more trucks would crowd up the highways and interstates. And the ASRRA says that the short lines emit very low emissions for the amount of cargo they haul. Along with lower costs of shipping, one ton of goods can be moved 470 miles on a gallon of diesel fuel. That is not one, two, or three, but four times more efficient than any truck. Now let's talk about some of the numbers. Please note that these are statistics that are taken from the American Short Line and Regional Railroad Association. 10,000 customers in the United States are served by short lines. These can be a packaging plant that maybe sends one hopper car out every two weeks, or a feed mill that sends out several cars each day. Around 17,800 people work for the short lines. $4.64 billion are earned every year for the economy from short lines. Only 9% of cargo hauled on short lines actually stay on that specific short line. In other words, it is never sent onto another railroad for further transport. Another 10% is bridged from one class one to another. Basically, the short line is serving as a middleman. 33% of cargo originates off of the short line and the other 48% terminates on the short line. Now I could go on about short lines for hours. Along with all of the information I've given you, they should also matter from a rail fan's perspective. Short lines are often populated with friendly crews and older motive power that's very different from the standard class one power we see every day. Short lines often satisfy my desire for diversity in railroading. It's a great change of pace from the PSR monsters that span miles across that roll at high speeds. Growing up in a small Louisiana town with a short line, I've always had an appreciation for these little railroads, and I hope everyone in the railroading community can appreciate them as much as I do. I hope you enjoyed watching this short video on why the short lines matter. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like down below and maybe leave a comment too. 
And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Until next time, I'll see you somewhere out by the rails.